Hi everyone, Sandra Vale here at Homesteading Ways. And today I wanted to go over emergency lighting. I'm going to show you three different ways to make your own emergency lighting. Cheap, quick, easy, perfect for if there's a storm that rolls through or something else that causes you to have a power outage because, you know, nobody likes to sit in the dark. Okay, the first method we're going to do is um, soy candles. Now I just do see this cup, this measuring, only one cup I put in there because I don't plan on making very many. I do already happen to have some on hand. But um, if you don't have a double boiler like this, then just use um, a glass measuring cup or, or any other kind of cup, mug, whatever that can um, handle the heat. And then just lower it into your saucepan of simmering water and then you can melt it that way. And I'm going to show you um, the wax I use here. Now I buy this straight from Amazon. I hope you can see that label well enough. And it's uh, just natural soy wax. I buy it uh, by 10 pounds. But you can, um, you can buy smaller amounts than that too. You don't have to buy the 10 pounds. But it's really convenient because it comes in those little flakes that melt really well. Okay, while the wax is melting, I figured we could go over a couple little things. What I'm going to be pouring it into is that little tin can. looks like this. And that is actually a cat food container. It's about the same size as a tuna fish can. And I save them. Um, my cat doesn't eat a lot of cat food. One of those cans will last me four days because it's just a little treat for her. But I still save them. I wash them out and they, they turn out great as candles. So anyhow, I put those little wicks in there with the metal tabs. You can buy them already done like this off of Amazon or eBay, whatever. And then I set it up with a pen or pencil to have two of them in the tin. Sometimes you have to mess around with them to get the, the right angle or whatever. But overall, they work pretty well. I tried it once before with only one wick. And it turned out that right around the edges here, I ended up with a lot of extra wax. And I didn't want to do that again. So I started using the two wicks. And it turns out great. And even though I don't fill it, you know, up to this rim, but I, I get kind of close, that candle will still burn for 15 hours or more. So it works out okay, really well. The wax is ready, so I'm going to start pouring here. See, they move just a little bit, and I'll have to reposition them. These should be perfectly hardened up within an hour or two. So whenever you get any extra time, go ahead and make them ahead of time and just, you know, store them away for that rainy day that you may need them. Once they're hardened, you're going to take your pen or pencil out and then trim the wick so that it's not quite so long. And that's really all you got to do. wanted to show you this is one that I I made and I actually did have to use a few weeks back when our power did go out and it came in really handy they don't get really hot so you don't have to worry about that the sides might warm up a little bit but the bottom really doesn't get that warm but if you're concerned just put it on a little plate and you'll be fine also I made this in a I think it's a half pint jar wide mouth and then I put a little thing of matches in there. There's only one wick in this one. But I like to give these away as gifts. They're just kind of neat. So let's move on to the next method. Okay, so here is the second method. If you didn't make any of your soy candles ahead of time, that's all right. We have a different way of doing stuff. We're going to use shortening for this one. Now you may have seen that thing on Facebook where they they have a stick a wick right in the top of this and it sounds great but once it starts burning below the rim you're not going to get any light plus this is paperish so you probably wouldn't want to do that anyhow but you just shove this full of shortening now we don't usually eat shortening but this stuff is cheap and it has a really long shelf life so if you were to be in a long 
geez, even a few week or two um, outage, this could come in handy if you had to use it for cooking, for frying, or whatever else. I'm just pushing it down and putting it there. And I'm going to grab this paper towel, not only because I'm getting dirty, but just to get it off the rim here. All right. Then I'm going to grab just another little piece. I don't know if that's long enough. Hang on here. And now we take a bread tie. And what I'm going to do is wrap the bread tie in the paper towel. I'm just going to wind it up real thick. Well, not real thick, but uh, tight, actually, is what I meant to say. We don't need all of this paper towel, so I'm just going to pull some of it off. You can use a napkin. Um, cloth actually works the best if you have like a little strip from, oh, say a t-shirt or pillowcase or a hunk off of your little strip off of your mop. And But then you have to um, put some um, wire or something in there. You want something that will make it hold a little bit better. Now there's some extra at this end here. See how I'm twisting it on kind of tight like that. and then I'm going to put it in here right in the center and I'm just going to keep letting it coil around you don't want your wick to be too high put a little bit of your shortening you know on the wick and then just fix it a little bit here make sure it's in there pretty good and this wick might be a little high I don't know we'll have to see Grab some of this. Now let's give it a light. Oops. Now I've used these before, but not uh, just kind of as testing them. So I'm not entirely sure how long this will burn. I did have it going once for three hours, and it, it was still going strong. This too, the sides. Um, get a little bit warm, not bad, and the bottom doesn't get real hot either. But like I said before, if you want, go ahead and put that on um, a plate or something if you're worried about damage or, um, uh, you know, burning yourself or anything like that. Now see, the wick is kind of high, and you'll get some a, a little bit of that black smoke coming off of there. And uh, normally you really don't want that, so put your wick a little bit smaller and you shouldn't have too much of a problem with that. Now the last one I'm going to do, you need a bread tie again and again some paper towel. We're going to do the same thing as what we did there. This one's going to be a little bit different but not entirely. Fat, oil, grease it all burns now if you happen not to have shortening on hand this method will come in handy not everybody has shortening and like I said even though we don't really cook with it or eat it I do have some just for um, emergency situations like this it's very inexpensive and the shelf life is really good So this last method here is oil. And a lot of people use olive oil. You can use used cooking oil. This happens to be grapeseed because that's what I have on hand. I'm not going to fill it up all the way simply because I don't need to. But you sure can if you want to. Or if you need to. Now this one's a little more trickier because you got to coil it in such a way that it will stay up out of the oil but not fall over and this too you don't want a really big wick on it 
Now I think I may need to put just a little bit more oil in there. I'm going to pull this out first. Now normally you would let it sit in there till the oil wicks all the way up to the top. And that would take about an hour. But sometimes if you're in a hurry, like a lights out situation, and you really need lighting quick, just put a little bit of oil up on that wick so it soaks through, and then you can get it going. Now the olive, the olive oil or whatever oil you use, this kind of little lamp works great. Both of these, you don't have to use a tin can like I did. You can use like those little votive cups for candles or, you know, mason jars. I prefer something with a, a wide mouth so it's easy to light. And even though these are solid, unlike, you know, unlike glass where you can see through and no matter how low it gets, you can see the flame or, or it'll project light. These are shallow enough so that even though the flame may go a little bit lower down in there, it still will put off light. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a lot of the black smoke off of both of these. The oil one's worse, and I'm assuming because that wick is a little bit higher. But um, there you go. That's how to make some emergency lighting. If you have the time, go ahead and make those soy candles ahead of time. They're wonderful to have. They work beautiful. And like I said, those are a little over 15 hours of burn time. I'm not sure how long a burn time with either one of these because I've never really tested them out. But I do believe each of them would go probably well over eight hours. The oil one probably even longer if it were filled up. So I hope this helped you out. Hope it gave you some great ideas. You know, thinking about being prepared. You never know what's going to come your way and when you need to know some of this stuff or perhaps share it with somebody else, a friend or someone who needs it. But thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I really appreciate it comment, subscribe, that would be great. It was nice talking to you, and you take care.